latest episode of McCall's Quilting Quilt Along is brought to you by Moda, producer of quilting fabric and home of the fabric pre-cuts. Hi, I'm Jan with Jan Patty Quilts, and we're doing a McCall's Quilt Along of my quilt over the meadow and through the year. It's made of Fern Hill fabric designed by me for Moda Fabrics and Hope's Journey fabric designed by Betsy Chechen for Moda Fabrics. And I would highly suggest if you want to make this quilt that looks just like this, you get a kit from McCall's. What we're going to learn today is freezer paper applique and needle turn. That's what I teach. Obviously, you need freezer paper. And you can get freezer paper on a roll. It's particularly available during the hunting season, but it's available the rest of the year at grocery stores, I believe, because a lot of women use it to freeze, uh, actually freeze meat in. And uh, somewhere along the line, some farmer's wife or hunter's wife figured out that if you iron it to fabric, it will stick. And if it sticks, you can use it for a pattern. And I think the whole applique and really it's used for templates too. Piecing uh, part of quilting got revolutionized by that. I get mine in sheets because just simply because it's easier and it doesn't roll. But it's also a little more expensive. So in both the stuff on the roll and the stuff in the sheets, this is... Jenkins freezer paper, you can get it at my website if you can't find it anyplace else, if your local quilt shop doesn't have it. And both sets of freezer paper, the stuff on the roll and the stuff in the sheets, will have a matte side and a shiny side. You're going to draw on the matte side, okay, and you're going to iron the shiny side to your fabric. The other thing you, you really are going to need is good needles for needle turn. And when I first started doing applique, I used quilting betweens. And as you know, they're very short. And you just use the tip when you're quilting. But when you're appliqueing, you use the whole needle. You hold the needle. And so I really, after a while, found out these work better. They're Milner's or straw needles, size 8 or size 9. And as you can see, they're long. And they're a lot easier to hold and a lot easier to work with. Your fingers don't cramp up. I use Rim Richard Hemming or John James. They're good, sturdy needles and don't bend. Uh, I must be pretty intense because there's some brands of needles that bend whenever I use them. So, okay, that's the needles you use. Here's the freezer paper. Take your pattern page and you can either use a light box you can use a window. Most of the time you can just lay it on the table and lay this on top and draw your pattern off of it. Uh, for something like the bottom, the first thing we're going to do is the grass that's in block one. The grass or ground is in all the blocks, so we're going to use that. And to do the straight lines, I tend to use a ruler because it's really straight lines are harder in curves. All right. And then you just trace around it here and you draw exactly on the line. This is your stitching line. So you want it to be exactly like the pattern is. Okay, and so then we're going to draw the other ones. You take a uh, pair of scissors and cut them out. So now we've cut out our two pattern pieces that we drew. And we're going to need to iron them on. But since this is going to go to the bottom of the block, we, we want to know, and then we're going to sew it on, we need to know this needs to be exactly one-fourth of an inch up from 
the bottom of the fabric. You may have to take your fabric with your rotary cutter and straighten it and make sure it's straight. But once you have done that, then we need to take a ruler and we're going to need to draw. Now here's where your sandpaper board comes in. And not all quilt shops have sandpaper boards. I have trouble finding suppliers, but I think I have found somebody to make them for me. You can get them on my website if you can't find them in your local quilt shop. But if you're not sure about what you're doing and you're having to buy a lot of things to begin with, you can make one. My husband made me one to begin with. You just get fine, fine grade sandpaper and glue it to the back of a piece of cardboard, glue it to the back of a clipboard or a file folder so that your sandpaper is on there. And this you use constantly in applique. All right, now. What I'm going to do is lay my piece of fabric on there and take my ruler and come up a fourth of an inch and draw a line. And what the sandpaper board does is hold your fabric in place so it doesn't stretch while you're drawing your line or drawing around your pattern. And it's just, it's also great for labels. You can put a label on the sandpaper board and write your name on it. Okay, so now we know exactly where a fourth of an inch is on this piece of fabric. And we can put our sandpaper board down. We'll get it later, believe me. Okay, now what we want to do, come here you, we're going to use you in a minute. Don't be greedy. Okay. We need to lay this right along the line and butt this up to here, your two pieces of the ground. Now we're going to hope that the iron's kind of heated up. We may have to just let it sit there for a while. And I think I'm just going to do that, yeah. It's just going to have to sit there for a second because if it doesn't, it, it won't stick and we need it to stick. Yeah, there we go. All right, now we can move this down. And we can lay that along there. Okay. Now. That will turn itself off before we need to use it again, but that's the way it works. Okay, now your freezer paper is on there. It stays in place. Your sandpaper holds, sandpaper board holds your fabric in place. And now when you cut this out, you don't have to cut this out exactly a fourth because you're gonna be turning it under. This had to be exactly a fourth because it's got to match the bottom of the block. Okay, so now you take this, and where are my scissors? They're right here. And just cut, eyeball a fourth of an inch to cut out along the edge of your grass. Because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sow our grass or our ground, if it's snow, to the bottom of the block. Okay. See, I don't have enough places to put things there. That'll, now I can grab that anytime I need it. Okay. Now what you we are going to do with this, now that we've done that, is we're going to sow it to the bottom of our quilt block that we've cut to size, and that is in the directions what size to cut this. Okay, make sure you add seam allowance and it should tell you that. Now, what is hard here, if you tried to pin this on and just sew this under, 
those long lines are difficult to turn under evenly. So usually what I do is just thread your needle and do a basting stitch. And I'm sure most of you know what that is, but in case you don't, it's a long, loose stitch and just baste that under, okay. Okay, because this time what we're gonna do is we are going to, besides learning about freezer paper applique and what needles to use, we're going to, and see that's why you've gotta use it. <laughs> I probably didn't need quite that much red, but I always tend to do that. I always tend to get twice as much thread as I need. And I think this time I got about 10 times as much thread as I need. Because we're going to baste that under and we've just got a little left. Okay, and you can see where I've drawn the line at the bottom of this. So we'll be exactly one fourth of an inch in because everybody knows in quilting, that's your seam allowance. Okay, now, I don't know what I did with my little ones. Put that back in there. Okay, now we're going to have to sew that on. And we can use silk pins, and if you use silk pins, I use if I use pins, I use silk pins because they're real fine and they leave very small holes in the fabric and they go through very easily. But on something like this, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna have to have so many pins in it, you're gonna stick your fingers all over everywhere. So I use glue instead. And I tend to use Jill Lilly Apple Glue because the tip is shorter and that makes it easier. So you just turn this little sucker over and put dots of glue right along here. Don't glue where, where the basting is because if you do, well, if you do, it's no big deal. You just have to cut the thread and pull it out one by one instead of the whole thing. Okay, and then you line this up on the bottom. Put it like that and press it down. Okay, now we're gonna leave that sitting for a while before I sew it down so it stays in. What I do at this stage to make sure my glue does not stop up, which it will in the tip, is I have a toothpick I keep in there and keep close and a napkin or a Kleenex and I take the tip and put it through so it's open. I know it's open. Then I put the lid on because otherwise even this short tip will clog up and then make sure you wipe off your toothpick and you can use it over and over and over again, which I do. Okay, now we have the base, but we need the scallops that go around. I've only cut one scallop. You can cut lots of them if you want, but what I do is layer my fabric and cut them all at once. You can cut with one pattern as many as four of these as at once. If you cut more than four, your fabric's gonna kind of shift and your pattern won't be quite so precise. So here's, the four I've cut, okay? You've gotta layer them right side up, 
like this. You cannot fold them like this. If you do, this one will be reversed. With the scallops, that's not going to make that big a difference, but it does make a small difference because, as you can see, this end and this end are not exactly the same. You can't just fold it in two. But, you know, if, any, if you do it that way and goof, don't worry about it. There aren't any applique police. And if anybody gets close enough to look at it and gripe about it, whack them in the head. Anyway. All right. Now, I will, will just pin this on. I don't iron it on to all four of them, or I will iron it on to the top one only, and then cut four at once. Okay. I'm only going to cut one here. But I can cut four. I think you need, I don't know whether you need 12 or 13. One, two, three, four. You need nine for the corner blocks and you need 13 for the center blocks. Okay? So now we've got this cut like this. And it's not quite as important because it's not a big piece that you have a fourth inch. If you want to measure, if you want to draw a fourth inch, go ahead. But now that you've got that done and you've cut four of them all at once, you don't have to have this ironed on in order to draw it, especially for something this small. You can just lay it on your sandpaper board, hold it in place, and draw around it because it's a nice small piece. And now you've got your scallop and it's exactly the way the pattern is. Now what you need is you need a dot in the middle. Okay. And I don't draw the dots. A friend of mine named Cherie Ralston, who is a brilliant woman, what it will tell you to do in the pattern and what you can do is trace all the circles because it'll give you a circle. Here he is. Okay. These, wherever they are, here they are, are tag sail dots. They come in three sizes I know of. They come in half inch, three-fourths inch, or one inch. And they come on sheets. You will find that most of the berries or flower circles in my patterns come in half inch, three-fourths inch, <laughs> or one inch because all you have to do now is take this off here Put it on the back of your, it, it saves drawing around it and it saves cutting it out. So all you have to do now is stick it to the back. Okay, and now when you cut this out or you cut anything that's got paper in the middle that you're going to fold or use around it, you cut more of a three-eighths seam inch seam allowance instead of one fourth because it's got to go around the paper. Uh, if, if particularly, and I goofed the other day when I was doing some ovals, this will work with ovals too, although you can't use textile dots. You have to use regular freezer paper. Okay, here is my needle. You put not in there. I do this and I'll do all my dots at once. I've got them all cut out. I keep them in a little Ziploc bag so they're all together. That's what that was. And then you do a running stitch around the outside because circles, if you're just going to applique them, are extremely difficult. Uh, challenging, excuse me, challenging. 
Jenny Doan told me a long time ago, don't say difficult, don't say hard, say challenging. Okay, they're really challenging. I'd call them hard <laughs> anyway. Sorry, Jenny. Uh, you just do a running stitch right around here. It takes a second, but it's a small dot. Yeah, I saw these scallops years ago in Mexican, really uh, art, especially around the Day of the Dead things they do. Uh, they would have a scallop like this. They were usually painted, they weren't appliqued, but there would be a scallop with a dot in the middle, and I thought that was really interesting. I've also seen it in a lot of punch needle stuff, and I really like the way it frames things, uh, the scallops and the dots. Okay, then after you go around it, you just pull, it comes up around the berry, or yeah, dot, whatever it is, and you secure it with a stitch, and then you iron, then you sew it to the center with your basic applique stitch. Okay, the basic applique stitch I use goes in, well, we don't have to now figure out where to hide the knot on this. I'll show you on the grass how to do that. But the ba basic applique stitch goes in, your needle goes in right behind where you came out. You do not put your needle in for the next stitch straight down. You do it always at an angle. If you do it straight down, your stitch will show. Every time I teach this and somebody has stitches showing, they've taken their needle straight down. You take it at an angle, like this, and then you just pull it and the stitch will bury itself in the fabric. And you always use thread, I should have told you this when we were grabbing it, you always use thread that matches the item you're appliquing on, not the background. In other words, you'd use red here instead of green. Okay. So we're gonna sew that in all the way around. We're not gonna sew all the grass on, but I will show you how to do the same stitch with that. Every block we do in this quilt will have ground of some kind, either grass, snow, or except for the one with the whales, it has water. I take that back. And quite a few of them have these scallops around the outside. Okay, I think, yeah, I'm all the way around. It's nice to look at the back and be able to see. Okay, so then you just take your needle to the back, and I do a small stitch like that. I usually do two of them. And then just to make sure the tail doesn't come undone there, I take it through and take it to the middle. It's harder for the tail to come loose there. Okay. Okay, so now you've got a scallop, but we're gonna have scallops that are gonna go all the way around there. And I will show you how to do that in a second. First, we'll just start on the grass so you can see that stitch again. And how I start it. Okay, need green. You notice I use a lot of red and green. <laughs> this is my needle roll, I love it. Moda just recently did a penny palooza, 
and all the designers were supposed to show the pin cushions they use, and that's the pin cushion I use. I really like it because it's got a place for my needles. I can put extra thread in here. My thimble goes in there, and I can just roll it up and take it with me. One of the things I like about applique is after you do the prep work during the day, yeah, I started to say this. For those of you who know me, you know I'm a real type A personality. You can kind of t tell that even if you don't know me by the number of quilts I make. And my husband used to say, will you please sit down at night and watch TV with me? And I'm not very good at just sitting. So I developed the, my, the method of doing applique that does the prep work during the day so at night then I can sit down with my husband and watch TV and applique. Now, there are lots of things that I do that could be done maybe differently if you got up and went to an iron or got up and went and did something in the process. So if you want to go ahead and do it that way, you go right ahead. I just developed this so prep works during the day. Once I sit down, I don't get up again. He yells a lot. <laughs> He's not mean. He just goes, do you know it's taking us three hours to watch a one-hour movie? And he's usually right. Okay, now you're going to do the basic applique stitch on your grass, which is going to stay very nicely in place. And I'm going to keep from going crazy by trimming all those little things off here because I want you, and they're all over my blue pants. Oh, well. It's good for them. Makes me feel like I'm at home if I have threads all over. Okay. You, you bring your thread in from the back, obviously, and bury it, and you do exactly the same thing we did with our Barry, you just go in right behind where you came up. And the stitches just bury themselves. And if you get a knot, which I always do somewhere, and I always tell people when I teach that if they do something wrong and it doesn't work right, don't be embarrassed, show it to me, because believe me, I know how to fix it because I've already done it myself. I can show you as much about what not to do as what to do, and one of them is my needle keeps coming undone, but I tend to do that. I use a 50 or 60 weight cotton thread you want to make sure the color of your thread matches. I think I probably will have thread packs on my website to go with this quilt. I love silk thread. I, I love the way it feels. I love the way it sews. But it tends to, I tend to have trouble with it knotting. That doesn't mean everybody does, but I do. If you have trouble with the thread knotting and it becomes difficult and annoying, use a different thread. It's just that simple. I find cotton to be uh, the easiest for me to use, but even some cottons, not a lot, and so I don't use that brand. Just use whatever is best for you. Okay, there. Now, we would just take that and sew that all the way along there, but you don't have to sit here and watch me sew it. You can do it yourself. It's real easy. Then just go ahead and pull that basting out after you've done it. Okay, now we've got to put our scallops around here before we start on the main body. We need to get this done first. And we need to know, it's just like quilting. When you quilt, you don't want to start and stop a lot. If you start and stop a lot, you have to thread needles, you have to knot needles, you have to, yeah. So I don't want to have to do that. So what I want to do is know where these guys are going to touch each other, and we're going to find that out. If we just put them like this, you see, we can't tell. We can just guess where that's going to do it, and we can't keep sewing because we'd have to sew this thing under. So what we do is we baste it under first. 
and you baste it under by just turning it under straight and then turning it like this so we have a point. And basically, come to think of it, we just need a point. We don't need to turn that under like that there. Sorry, that was my bad. Okay, do we have a, no, we don't have a needle in, a knot in here. We need a knot. Okay. We're just gonna turn under each end. We're not gonna do the whole thing because all we need to know is where they're gonna touch. And we can tell that now once we've got that under. Okay. Now we'll do the other end. And preferably we'll do it with one that's already got a very under. But we'll do that. And I'll tell you, I do a lot of this stuff, not, not the long pieces here, but like these. I'll sit in my chair at night with my sandpaper board turned upside down so that the hard part is up and do this, because you're going to need to glue them down. But a lot of this stuff I do at night, too. But basically, it's, it's really a little easier when you have a table like this. And you can just do it at the table or the kitchen counter. <laughs> OK. Now. We've got both ends under, we've got dots in the middle. And what we can do is now just take these and line them up next to each other so that when we sew, we will just start at one end and go like that and then if we've got them like that, we'll, we'll have them clear across the top too. So we'll have our grass done or ground done in this block, and then we will have all our scallops on, and we will not have done an awful lot of starting and stopping. So I think probably if you get all this done, you will have made a head start in learning how to do freezer paper and needle turn applique. Thanks for joining me with this session of the McCall's Quilt Along. Remember to get a kit if you want one, and I'll see you next time.